When you hear the name Earth 2, the title kind of throws you off. I remember when I first saw the name, I thought the show was going to be about the planet being copied or be about time travel. This show was very unlucky the time it came out. The premise of the series sounds very interesting on paper. A group of people getting away from Earth trying to find a new habitable planet. A smidgen of lost in space. The year is 2192, Earth is basically useless, most of the people live in space stations, and a disease named the Syndrome, yeah that's all they call it, has been affecting children. Motor functions are compromised, the immune system goes bad, and they suspect it's because they've never been on Earth. The government says, this is not true. Devin Adair doesn't buy it, so she funded an expedition to find a new home for people who wanted to leave. Everyone always says the pilot of the series was amazing. It takes place in space, beautiful model work. All the governments are fighting the expedition to the point of having a bomb on the ship. That's how hard they want to keep control. They don't care about children dying or murdering hundreds of people in a cover-up. Everyone on the show, I liked. They felt real. The two-hour pilot really focused on everyone. Even gave a few fake-outs on who we thought was going to be a main character. Deborah Ferentino plays Devin Adair. She's the leader of the expedition and the one who funded the whole project, primarily to save her son Ulysses. He became the key character to the story. Joey Zimmerman did fine work. He felt like a real child, got to save the day a few times. I think the biggest actor the show had was Clancy Brown, who played John Danziger. Uh, get used to that name because they say it way, way too much. I think they turned it into a joke. He can be the asshole, then turn into a good guy. Brown's really good at that. His character Red Death in Venture Brothers is really close to what he played in this. He's not a villain, but he doesn't agree with Adair in most cases because he wasn't supposed to be with them. Him and his daughter, True, they were doing final maintenance work on the ship. They were supposed to be let go before they left. Thanks to them having to leave early and a second bomb damaging the ship, both of them were stuck on G889. True, she was okay, played by Jay Madison Wright, kind of got lost midway through the season. Even though True and Yuli were the only kids on the planet, they really didn't like each other. It stems from Yuli's mother being a billionaire. Yeah, he had health issues, but he got pampered compared to True's life. Her father just got by on crummy jobs, which made her more manipulative by one of the main villains. Now, Yale, played by Sullivan Walker, was the one that was really interesting. Yale's half-human, half-cyborg used to be in the military. His memory was erased to cover up murders and betrayals. We got to see all this through his holographic R projector that he fought in his mind. He's basically two people in one, the kind Yale that was reprogrammed with the suppressed army vet. He struggled for a few episodes on who he really was. I wish all the episodes were this good, but that's the problem you have when you isolate your show on basically an empty planet. While Yale's background worked, the Doctor's story did it. Julia Heller was played by Jessica Steen, who was the original Doctor Weir in Stargate SG-1. She also played the small world Donna Sabine on Flashpoint. I always wondered if she didn't want to be Weir in Atlantis because of her experience with Earth 2. She was a double agent for the government that wanted no one to reach the new planet. She relayed information about the crew, Yuli, and the real nature of why they didn't want the Eden Project there. The crew eventually found out who she was and did leave her behind to basically die. She did turn good by betraying the government, but it really didn't work. They had a huge problem with pacing and drama. They would have endless episodes of them traveling around the planet, but would start a conflict and end in two episodes. The stuff that's interesting was wrapped up quick. They didn't see what was boring for some reason. The last three characters are really an afterthought. Rebecca Gayhart plays Bess Martin, wife of Morgan Martin, played by John Giegenhuber. They're the comedy duo. They both grew up in mining colonies and weren't a part of the crew. They both got stuck there like Danziger. Morgan mostly caused problems for everyone in one episode. He nearly got everyone killed. He used a stupid mining device that's able to lock a location for future extraction. It freezes the environment, including people. The last one is the ship's pilot, Alonzo Solis, played by Antonio Sabato Jr. He was crippled in the crash landing, so was stuck to cars and stuff. He was also a part of the main story with Yuli, but his character? A total waste. The thing with the planet is that it has an intelligent species called the Terrians. 
They're a psychic race. They telepathically connect to Yuli and Alonzo. They heal Yuli's disease by linking him to the planet's own shared life energy. If that bond is damaged by the planet being abused, he dies. In a way, he's life insurance. That's the big arc Yuli and Alonzo go through. Alonzo is able to contact these Terrians in his dreams. He's kind of like the lawyer between Adair and the Terrians, keeping both sides somewhat happy. At the same time, the Terrians want Yuli to be some sort of future Terrian. Details aren't really explained. It's kind of like, you want to live here? One of you must become one of us so you keep harmony with the planet. Also, Alonzo and Julia have some stupid love relationship that goes nowhere. They themselves don't even know what to do. It tears Devin between what she wants for her kid. He's alive and healthy, but he's going to be used as somewhat like a sacrifice. Not for death, but no longer human. There's only three things going on on the show. Find New Pacifica, which was the location they were supposed to land at, deal with random villains, and whether if Yuli would leave them at some point. The rest of them is traveling day after day to the home location where most of their stuff was dropped off. I will give them credit for one area. Basically, the entire show was filmed on location. They had to deal with New Mexico's winter for half the season, so some episodes, like a local virus episode, were built around the limitations for the filming. The real failings come from the story itself. The thing is, this is basically the Oregon Trail in space. These type of series are extremely difficult to pull off because it's so easy for the show to go nowhere. Stranded, limited supplies, desert environment, them driving to location to location, rinse and repeat. Bringing in enemies when you're supposed to be separated is convoluted at best. Everything has to come to them. They had no real budget for aliens, so they kept on recycling the same two or three aliens, on top of which, just three months later, Star Trek Voyager came out. They had the same idea and made Earth 2 look bad. They wrote themselves into a corner. Oh, they tried really hard to have villains, but nothing was good enough. You need a villain, but need to keep the team hidden so they don't all get killed. The first bad guy are these semi-intelligent animals called Grendlers. They're scavengers, they steal stuff, gave problems in a few episodes. There was also a small creature that could paralyze humans with its claw that only lasts for another few episodes. The second villain was a guy named Gall, played by Tim Curry. Even with him, it didn't last long. We found out this planet had been found before, and it ended up being used as a penal colony for criminals, where Gall stalked them for a few weeks, manipulated True to the point of her breaking rules and even attempting to steal a truck for him. He never felt menacing. He's just one guy. Yeah, he had help with some of the aliens on the planet, I still didn't buy it, even with him killing the captain. Nothing they did made him feel like a real threat. Then he gets killed off in five episodes because it would have made everyone look stupid if they kept falling for this one guy over and over again. Rarely did they deal with the criminal to the point of them not even caring. Moving on to the last guy called Riley, played by Terry O'Quinn. He was the government connection to Julia. She was reporting her progress back to him, as well as trying to figure out how Yuli was cured to the point of trying to recreate the process in herself. The whole goal of that was so that they can conquer the planet, but they needed to figure out a way to deal with the Terrians. This blew up in her face, almost killing her. That's how they found out the truth. This was pretty cool in the beginning, but I think they got really worried when they looked at the show, realizing it was boring. So they turned Riley into a computer program in orbit. This AI had the power to kill them, so they had to stop it. It was also breaking down due to age. This is what I meant adding more and more junk, but never directly finding them. Voyager had its issues. It ain't perfect, but it's Star Trek. They explored hundreds of worlds, so problems, issues, cool stories came to them. If you only have the main crew and nothing really happens, why make the show? You could only go so far with themselves and any internal conflicts. The ratings plummeted after two months. NBC tried everything. They aired episodes out of order, so you had Alonzo's leg fixed and then broken again. I'm open to very talky shows, but Earth 2 went too far. What I found ridiculous, they had a cliffhanger in the finale. They set up a crash ship with people frozen in it. It had a nuclear power they could use. That virus they were suffering from was cured, but Adair was hiding a personal disease she had, so they put her in the stasis pod to try to save her at a later date, and that's how the show ends. Even the finale was stupid. 
a dayer suffers from an ailment that doesn't show up anywhere earlier, contrive nonsense for a stupid cliffhanger. Even though this was the real ending, there were still two episodes left thanks to airing them out of order. At least they aired them all. I really can't defend Earth 2. I do like the characters and who they are, it's just that they don't do anything. Yeah, we get some fighting and mystery, but it wasn't enough. Maybe they thought the Terry and mysticism was going to be enough. It was confusing to me. I rewatched the series not too long ago. I was like, maybe because I was a kid when it came out, that's why it was boring? No, still boring. On top of it, they made the Terrians not verbally speak. You have a boring show with passive aggressive people that don't talk. These type of shows almost never work if you don't have a world set up around them. There's no way to get something going. That's why Voyager worked and this flopped. The same thing happened 15 years later on Stargate Universe. That series fell into the exact same trap. Convoluted ways to get villains to them while they were alone traveling through space out of control. The only thing they did worse was made you hate half the cast because of what they did towards people. We'll say one thing. I'm glad it got cancelled. Years later, people found out that there was a planned second season. There was this treatment video showing off what they wanted to do. The series was completely mutilated. I totally agree the show had to be retooled, but the spirit still has to be the same. The characters have to be them. They had them find New Pacifica, cool, but then they had Danziger become basically the new villain. Everyone getting into arguments, a new threat would find them. It literally was going to be turned into Stargate Universe. They just went to the other end of the extreme. No middle ground whatsoever. The mid-90s wasn't Spielberg's greatest moments on television. He wasn't directly involved, but his production company produced the series. I think Universal really wanted their foot in the sci-fi door that badly, so they rushed a lot of expensive series, but couldn't find that perfect balance with thought-provoking ideas and action. Earth 2 still has its merits. I wouldn't recommend the series, but if you're curious, check it out. It's on streaming sites, it's on DVD. Honestly, it's better than a lot of shows made today. At least they tried something new instead of just doing reboots and remakes. Thanks for checking out the video. Subscribe if you want to see more from me. Leave a thumbs up if you liked it. Leave a thumbs down if you hated it. And if you remember a movie or a show from the past that's long been forgotten, good or bad, leave it as a suggestion below. I'm always on the lookout for obscured stuff.